Okay, hello and welcome back to Zoink TV, I'm Andrew Weir, and today we're going to be looking at some texturing on Blender 2.65. And this is the extreme basics for any users that really haven't seen Blender before. Uh, they've literally just moved over to texturing and they found my video or whatever. And so they're going to want to know a little bit of the basics before we move on to the more advanced stuff. So that's going to be all the generated stuff, we're not looking at UV mapping, which is where you should go to next. And from this point, I'm going to make a few more videos split up into different modes because uh, obviously some people aren't interested in some things. If I made one 40 minute video on it all, some people get lose interest at the beginning and they'll um, and will not see the stuff they want to see. So it's going to be a series of videos. I'm going to add it to the basic tutorial series. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to set up a quick scene. So I'm hoping you're familiar with uh, all the basics of blender so far and all we're going to do is literally just that with smooth shading there which I mentioned in the material um, tutorial. I'm going to delete this default material that's on the default cube as well as the getting rid of the default texture that was already there as well uh, although it was a blank texture and the reason for that is that the textures are directly linked to the materials. So what I need to do is make a new material uh, which is the default material. Click here and maybe I'll name it um, texture so it's easier to find up there and then when I click the ball here I can click this symbol and bring up my texture uh, material right there. And then I'm going to take it over to the materials where we'll see that the menu slightly changed from when we last looked at it and that's because it recognizes the material that we've got selected uh, by having this selected and we can add a new material texture to that and we can render this straight away and we'll see the kind of result it gives it's just like a pink cloud thing which is a basic effect there are a few more basic effects over here if you're interested but we're going to look at clouds at the moment and once you go from there you can look at worth experimenting with all of them but if you're going to go anywhere just go to like wood we see we get a line effect rather than a cloud effect and there's a few different changes you can make there to make it look really good uh, obviously it's not going to look like a wood texture but it's going to be able to change the way that uh, the shape can have light on it and things to make the wood texture look good with a basic kind of uh, generated material on there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the preview here to both material and uh, texture split half and half and then we can close all the rest that we're not looking at the moment we're going to ignore them until a bit later and we can go into colors uh, in colors we've got ramp which we have previously looked at in the materials and I'm pretty sure if you've looked at Photoshop and things you know how ramp works it just fades one color into the other and you can change a few settings there uh, a suggested thing that you can do with this by, by me is you can just edit the colors into green and black and then that can make the cloud effect look like kind of an army clothing effect which will make it really easy for making some army clothing because it's completely generated meaning that it's gonna it doesn't mean you have to make the random shapes yourself it means that you can just get the cloud texture change it up a little bit and apply it easily um, and the, the ways to make that look a little bit better is we can change some things here and obviously the texture is black and white so if we were to change a few things here red, blue, green is not going to do anything because it's black and white uh, the brightness will do stuff because it's completely black makes it see through and completely white makes it completely pink which is just showing what happens here because when it's white and pink um, we've got uh, when it's black and white even, we've got white and pink on the thing. Uh, and I'm sorry if you can hear rain in the background, it is really uh, heavy at the moment. So what we're going to do now is just going to look at the contrast, which will affect it. It makes it a bit more, uh, less detail there, but for a better effect. And all the way down on the contrast will make it kind of a blurry pink type thing. Uh, which is okay. Saturations controlling black and white, which it's already black and white, so it's not going to do anything. Color and grayscale, this is where we can change it into color, but that's not going to give the exact effect which you'd expect because we can click color now in the individual cloud settings 
and that's the kind of result it gives, which I'm not too sure what it's for. Um, so, you know, you can edit that however you wanted to, but I'm not, again, I, I don't really know why that's an effect, because I, I don't think that's very useful. It's more useful in grayscale, uh, where we can also change the noise, which is also changing the details. So if we change it to hard, then the details are going to be way down, and it's going to be, like all, uh, a slightly different effect, maybe like uh, getting more of a bumpy effect in there with the hard detail. Uh, and if we do have it on hard detail or soft, we can change the size, which on soft makes it really blurry. Probably the same with hard. It's, it's uh, blurry, but we can still get more detail on the hard type. Uh, but in soft, it's definitely blurry. So if it's too blurry, giving not much of a result on the uh, circle texture on the preview. Then we can change the depth up and that will change the blur down and uh, since we're looking at a dark area here we can change the contrast to get a bit more of a variation in that dark area. Um, that's fairly basic so I'll close that again and we'll look at what the hardness does when we change the depth as well and it just gets a little bit more detailed. And from there there are a few more pre-made noise basis they're called, or noise basis. And it's worth just clicking each one of these individually and seeing what it does. Some of them will look like they haven't changed it much, but they'll give it a different effect. So when we change the size or depth, uh, we can definitely see a different result with some of them. But for now, I think we're okay, and it kind of makes it a little bit less uh, a different uh, type of random. So if we had two of the same, we might want to change it up so they don't look exactly the same. Uh, mapping we'll ignore because we're looking at generated mapping in this one for now. And um, when we get to the image textures and more advanced textures, that's where the mapping will come in. And influence, which is what the main thing I wanted to mention uh, in this video. Now what we want to do with the influence is right now it's on colour. So if I just change the size uh, back down just for now because we want more detail in there. I'll change it to soft as well as the Blender original with a high contrast. So we kind of want that kind of effect which is going to work well for what I want to see next. And we've got diffuse, shading, specular, and geometry. If we look at diffuse on the materials, we can see that it's all to do with the colours. So we can change the colour of the material with the diffuse. And that's exactly what the same is here, apart from when it's on colour, yeah, that's changing it into that pink colour. If we uncheck that, we've got no colour. Uh, so we can change it to intensity. And intensity is just changing how intense the texture material is, so that's when it's black and white. The white areas will be less intense or more intense, not sure which one it is, and the black area will be more intense or less intense. Uh, but we can kind of see that on the cube lot there because you can see it looks like dirt on the cube, which is kind of a good effect they can give. Alpha and uh, translucency aren't going to do much at the moment, so I'll ignore them. And we can move over to shading, where this top one here, which I forget what it is. Ambient, uh, that's not going to do anything right now, but we can go to Emit, where a lot of people will kind of like this effect because it turns it into an Emit material, uh, which we've seen before, but only in specified areas. So that means that, you know, all this isn't going to be lit up and all that is which can give a nice effect, um, and I'm sure you can think of plenty of uses for that, maybe in futuristic games uh, that you might want to make, or animations you might want to make in the future, then that's a good effect right there. Uh, mirror, we're going to need this material to be a mirror to uh, see results from this, so that's what I'll do real quick. We should be familiar with materials before we move on to textures. Um, but select mirror, and we'll see that the material now only reflects from the shape. So where it's reflective, the pink is appearing because it's, it's pretending that that pink is part of the outside world, 
or it's only appearing when it's reflected from the shape, uh, which is quite a nice effect. And if it were an image texture, you could make it look like the whole world outside of the shape um, when actually it's just an image. So that's how that's used. And ray mirror, that controls where it's mirrored. As we can see here, this area here that wasn't an emit, that, that's not a mirror. And the area that was emitted when we had it on emit up there, that is now a mirror. So we can see that a lot better on the uh, sphere for now. Uh, you can see that it's definitely not reflective there. Going around here, we can see a reflection of the cube where we can, um, you know, get a ni nice effect there. That would be more useful for maybe streets, change control where uh, maybe the water on the street if it's raining, control where's shiny and where isn't, so where's dry and where isn't, as well as changing uh, maybe individual materials. So if you wanted one part to be shinier than the rest of the part, then you could control how intense the darkness is and so on to control that, which is incredibly useful. I'm going to turn off mirror on this material now because we don't need it. And we're going to get to the final few ones. Uh, intensity for the specularity, that's just changing. Uh, we can see it, we won't be able to see much of a difference when we render this here. What it's actually changing is where the specularity is, which is the white dot, uh, where, the, where the strong light is. It will be less or more intense, just like the intensity for the uh, diffuse. And the colour, that means that where the shine intensity light, uh, specularity light is, just like the mirror, it will only appear in the white area. So that's quite important uh, in, in certain situations, though rendering it right now wouldn't show much of a result. And the hardness, that completely controls, just like with the ray mirror, where the mirror is. Uh, so that's controlling where the specularity is. And that's also an interesting effect. So again, where you're showing where it's shiny and where isn't. With this one, you're saying where is maybe a rubber texture and where is maybe a metal part on that rubber. Which can be quite useful. But now we get to the more interesting stuff, which I'm kind of, I was saving it to the end because it is the last one here. But it's probably the best effect you can get out of these basic material textures. And that is with the geometry and normal. Uh, which is a normal map changing how uh, we see light on the shape. And you can see that that's giving some areas smooth and some areas bumpy, which is exactly the kind of result we wanted. And, and you can see that it's pushing it downwards. So a lot better on this cube. This part here is definitely raised, whereas this part here is definitely lower down, although it's not literally lower down because it's just pretending that it is. Uh, but that's the kind of effect that gives, and maybe it's a bit too strong at the moment, although it didn't look too bad. We can change it down to 0 0.3 and get less of an effect there, maybe looking a little bit more realistic than the completely uh, strong effect. And if we if we wanted to reverse this effect, so we saw that some parts looked lower than the others, we can actually take some of these effects into the minuses, which just makes black for white and white for black in this thing here. Meaning that when we render this now, the this this part's definitely higher, and that part's definitely lower, uh, which is quite probably high, quite hard to see from your point of view on the video. But you can definitely see that's the kind of effect it gives, and it is quite a nice effect. Um, I'm not going to mention these other two because I'm not too sure how they're used. So I'm not, and I've never used them before. So I'm sorry about that. But I hope I've covered everything that you'd want to know about the basics of just adding a texture. And we've seen quite a few interesting effects there, which I hope have inspired you to go make something just real quick with these. And we'll get on to the more advanced stuff next time. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.